Hello everybody, I'm Isabel Spradlin of YourMassagePractice.com and as always I am here trying to help you avoid all the mistakes that I've made over the 10 years of my private practice and I want to bring to you just the most essential tools that will immediately help your practice start to grow as fast as possible. So I'm so excited. We're here for the second installment of our Don't Overcomplicate It series. And this second installment is all about your website. So this is one place that I routinely see massage therapists overcomplicating. They, many people tend to overbuild their website. And what you have to remember is that as a massage therapist, you are providing an in-person service. You are not, for the purposes of your massage practice, you are not a blogger, you are not an online marketer, you're not an online coach running group programs in need of robust online services and marketing. You are an in-person massage therapist and it really is best for your practice if your website reflects that. So if you want to have a blog that you regularly update, like weekly, and that's something that's really easy for you to do and it's kind of intuitive and you can you have a million ideas about what you'll put on there and it's very simple and uh, straightforward for you to get those things onto your website, then that's fine. Definitely keep a blog. It helps to establish uh, credibility. It helps to give people who may not know anything about you a better sense of who you are. Those are all pluses. But you can do all of that with just a handful of pages on your site. You do not need a blog as a massage therapist. Um, for my massage practice, I have used a blog off and on over the years. I've tended more to do that in a newsletter setting, uh, but you can also duplicate your newsletter and your blog so that you're reusing that content. It makes things a little easier for you. But really think hard before starting a blog because really you need that time and energy and effort to be putting into the things that will absolutely reliably grow your practice. And if you're kind of spinning your wheels trying to come up with content for your blog or write content for your blog, that's time you're taking away from things that will have a much more immediate impact on your growth. So really take that seriously, take some time to consider it, and just know that um, you can establish credibility, really talk to the people, your ideal clients, who you really want to bring into your practice in just a handful of pages. So essential pages on your blog are your about page with a lovely picture of yourself, something clean and professional uh, that you feel expresses your personality, hopefully. Um, and make sure it's not a grainy picture. You want something really clear, again, clear and clean. Those words come up a lot when it comes to online presence. Um, so you want your about page. You want a page about what to expect with you in treatment so that if you are a craniosacral therapist that you don't have people come coming to you for sports injury massage or Swedish full body massage. Um, there's nothing more disappointing as a client than showing up for one thing that you are expecting and having something totally different happen. This has happened to me as a client before. It's very discombobulating. It's not fun. Don't let your clients go through that. Make sure that they know what to expect from you as a massage therapist. Uh, maybe even give them some information about how to prepare for your sessions and what to expect after your sessions, how to take care of themselves after. You definitely want a testimonials page, and if you're brand new at this, um, have people who have legitimately received your work write some testimonials for you. This can be family, friends, they can disclaim at the beginning, I'm um, Isabel's sister and I really have think that she's the best massage therapist in the world so that there's no doubt for people where that enthusiasm is coming from but really it's better to have some sort of clear honest uh, reviews about your practice even if in the beginning it's from friends and family so um, again in our practices long term it's really probably not the best idea to work with friends and family but in the beginning you have to start somewhere so you know that's one place to consider looking for those reviews the other thing that you absolutely 1000 percent need on your website is 
a scheduling page. And I don't just mean a contact page with your email or your um, phone number. You need that as well, but I really want to encourage you to use online scheduling. It's not just um, made up stuff that it saves you a ton of time. Clients love online scheduling. Even my 70 year old clients who can barely use the internet, they love it because they can schedule anytime when they're thinking of it. They don't have to wait for a call back. If they need to cancel, they still call me. It's not navigable for them to do all the stuff that you can do, like the full function of online scheduling for them, but they love being able to go online and just schedule and then get the reminder emails. This is huge. So. I know that there can be a lot of pushback for people around online scheduling. They don't want to see, or they don't want other people to see how many appointments they're not filling or um, what their work hours are. There are all sorts of reasons that people have for not wanting to use online scheduling. And my best advice here is to get over it <laughs> because your clients, most clients, I have never had a client that didn't love online scheduling. Uh, almost all practitioners that I've talked to that use online scheduling, they book way faster, they grow their practice faster, and they book out farther than the people who are not. It just saves a lot of headache. So um, that's a really, really strong thing to have on your website as one of these few pages of your website. The other thing, uh, the, the third thing, that I really want you to put on every single page of your website, every single page of your website at the top is your location, the address, the actual physical address of where you are. If you are working out of a home office or somewhere else that you don't want to share the actual address unless people have scheduled with you, that's fine. At least put the cross streets. Um, so you want your, uh, your physical location where you're at. You want your book now button, the top of every page, and you want your phone number at the top of every single page of your website. It's up to you if you put your email address there, but those three things, definitely your location, the book now, and your phone number. This is for many reasons. It serves people who are just scheduling with you for the first time. It also serves your current clients if they're running late and they haven't programmed your number into their phone yet. So easy for them to figure out how to contact you and let them let you know real quick that they're running late or whatever else may be happening. So that is the website in a nutshell. Of course, of course, there's no way we could cover everything that needs to go into your website in just a brief video. But if you can cover these things in your website from just out of the gate, it's going to stabilize your practice faster. So let's review. One, you are an in-person service, so just make sure that your website reflects that. You don't need fancy logos, you don't need super fancy design. If that's you and you must have that for your own comfort, fine, go for it. But just know that it's not necessary for your clients to have a good experience and turn into possibly somebody who's just checking you out into somebody who is actually your ideal client and getting them booked. It doesn't take a fancy website to do that. It just takes something that's clean, clear, straightforward, good looking, and that's it. You don't have to have all the bells and whistles and blogs and other online services like that. Number two, just use your handful of pages. Again, you don't need a robust uh, weekly or daily upside updated blog in order to come across as who you are as a professional and as a massage therapist and as a human being. You just need those handful of pages that we talked about. And then third, at the top of every single page of your website, have those essential pieces of your address, your book now button, and your phone number so that people don't have to dig in order to contact you or in order to book an appointment with you. So I know it seems simplistic to be talking about a website in this way, but remember your website is your tool. Your website is not your business itself. It's a tool that helps you grow your practice, that helps keep your practice stable. So use it as a tool and have fun. And as always, please let me know how this goes for you. I look forward to hearing about it. Bye.